Like say good morning, church. Good morning, Jack. Pastor Jita, John Jita, Pastor North River Bible Baptist here in Hickson, Tennessee. I'd like to invite you to our worship service, especially those who are watching by Facebook. I know spring is setting in, and I know people are getting their boats and going out to the lake, but let me just tell you, you need to come to the house of prayer. Amen, somebody. Amen. God has set aside one day. You work all the time. You got all things to do, but let's give the Lord some praise on his day. Amen. Amen. Some of us just, you know, we ought to thank the Lord for our help. Thank the Lord for being able to be in our right mind. Thank the Lord for food on our table. Thank the Lord for shelter. Thank the Lord for clothing. We have a lot to thank the Lord for. Amen? So we want to thank the Lord for everything that he's been doing. We really just one week away from resurrection. I know there are a lot of people pack the church out for Easter and then they don't come back the next Easter. Hold on a minute. You need to try to come to church every Sunday, the day that God has made. Amen, somebody. So we're going to start a new series in the book of Acts. We're going to talk about the history of the church and our responsibility in light of the resurrection. You know, Jesus went back to heaven, but he didn't go back to heaven for us just to sit around and do nothing. Amen. He left some, again, some work for us to do. Amen, somebody. Amen. So he wants us as a church to be busy. The Bible says, he said, occupy, tear, come. Amen. And occupy means that being busy, you need to stay busy doing something for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. In 2024, we need what I call troublemakers causing trouble all over the world. Now, we're going to look in the Bible. There were some men that caused some trouble. They said that we ought to obey God rather than men. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we, we, we're talking about standing up for righteousness. We're talking about speaking out. We're talking about taking action. We're not talking about just causing trouble to be causing trouble, but we're talking about standing up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. We're talking about speaking the truth in love, not hate speech. People say, well, you hate people. No, I don't hate people. I just preach what the Bible said. I didn't write the Bible. The Bible was written long before I was even born. So I just preach. I'm the mailman. Amen, somebody. Amen. I preach the word of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Where there's darkness, we need to bring light. Amen. We've been talking about our church. We need to be a light in this community. Amen, somebody. Amen. Where there's hatred, we need to give love. Amen, somebody. Amen. A lot of people mad at everybody and got hatred, racism, and all that. We need to bring unity. We need to bring some love in this world. Amen, somebody. Amen. Where there's sadness, we need to bring joy. Amen. People are sad and depressed. Uh, one of the biggest things that's going on today is mental health. I mean, a lot of young people don't even want to be here. Let me tell you, it's a reason God made you. God created you. You're fearfully and wonderful made. You ought to be rejoicing because God got you here for a reason. Amen, somebody. Amen. Bring people joy. People in bondage, people in prison, we need to help them with liberty. Yeah, you can be in prison, but you can still have your mind open to the gospel. Amen, somebody. Amen. Believe it or not, a chaplain been saying a lot of prisoners are getting saved. Amen, somebody. Amen. A lot of military people are getting saved. A lot of chaplains are baptizing people. Let me tell you, don't let nobody put bondage on you. You're free in Christ Jesus. Amen, Amen. somebody. Amen. Where there's weakness, we need to bring strength. Amen. Oh, I'm so tired. And we come on now. We want you to get rejuvenated. We want you to get some energy. We are just talking about that. Where there's spiritual death, we want to bring spiritual life. Amen, somebody. Amen. So are you ready to be a troublemaker? And I'm not talking about a bad troublemaker. I'm talking about a good troublemaker for the Lord. Amen, Amen. somebody. Amen. So grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Acts. We'll look at a couple of passages in Acts. And then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. Just one verse in 1 Corinthians. But Acts chapter 17 then Acts chapter 18, then 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And again, y'all know I'm a Bible-believing church. I'm a Bible-believing teacher, Bible-believing <laughs> preacher. I'm glad to be your Bible teacher, your theologian today. We want to teach you the word of the living God. I don't have anything new. I have the old, old story. I teach from the word of God. I believe that this is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of the living God. I say every week, I'm glad God left us a road map. God left us a blueprint. Yeah, I'm not just operating in the dark. I have a book, a living Bible. Let me ask somebody. Amen. The Bible was written in Hebrew. It was written in again, a Greek, the Old Testament in Hebrew, New Testament in Greek, Cornet Greek, but then some of the Old Testament in Aramaic. But again, God had men to translate the Bible into English, which is our my native language. So he's translating the language again over the world for people so they can receive the word of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Our traffic controllers have one language, 
And the one language for the air traffic, when they fly in a plane, when they get ready to land, is English. So I, I, I know the Bible was written in Greek, and it, but God gave us English, and a lot of countries speak English, even in Britain and over in a lot of countries. So we're going to stick with the Bible in our own language. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. Acts chapter 17. You there? Say amen. Amen. So we're going to start at verse 1 and read down to verse 9, and we'll jump over to Acts chapter 18. Now when they, this is Paul and his company, on his missionary journey, had passed through Amphilia and Apollyon, they came into Thessalonica. We've already been studying about the, uh, the church of Thessalonica, where it was a synagogue, that's where the Jews meet, of the Jews. Verse 2. And Paul, as his man was, went in to them, and three Sabbaths reasoned with them out of the scriptures. So this is three Sundays. He, they can run him out of town, but for three Sundays or three Sabbath days, he would try to reason them out of the scriptures. Opening and alleging, now he's talking to Jews now, and they, they know the scripture, the Old Testament, but this is what he's teaching them, that Christ must needs have suffered and what? Risen, Risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus, I'm talking about the Jesus that's in the scripture. Now they didn't have the Acts, they didn't have the New Testament, they didn't have it, so he's teaching them from the Old Testament. But this Jesus whom I preached unto you is what? Yes. Is Christ. Verse 4. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and other devout priests and great multitudes and other chief women out of few. So any time you preach to God, you're going to have somebody. So some believe. And then he said, they asked questions of Paul and Silas. And then of the devout Greeks, that's the Gentile, a great multitude. So a lot of them got saved. Paul said, let me tell you this, Jesus. And they got saved, they believed. And then other chief women, these were some of the rich women, some of the women that had power, a few of them got saved. So, so when the gospel goes out, some people get saved. Amen, somebody. Amen. Look at verse 5, though. But the Jews which believe not, there's always going to be a group there, ain't that, that don't believe, move with envy, took unto them a certain Louis fellows of the basin sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar. So you always got somebody who's going to be against the word of God. And assaulted the house of Jason. They assaulted the guy who had Paul, the Jew that had Paul preaching, and sought it to bring them out to the people. Verse 6. And when they found them out, they took Jason and searched them up to the rulers of the city of These that have been the world of the world have been given also. Now that's the testimony we're going to be looking at. These were some troublemakers. They turned the world upside down. And I'm here to tell you today, we need to turn the world upside down. The church needs to get back into being salt and light and changing the morals and changing the standards. And we need to turn this world back to God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Whom Jason had received. This is talking about Paul and Silas and this company. And these all do contrary, they, they're trying to find a reason to fault them, to the decrees of Caesar, in other words, the law, they, they're going against Caesar, but they weren't really going against Caesar, saying there's another king, one Jesus, verse 8. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they were heard this thing. So you always got a crowd that want to get some bad people to come and try to run the Christians out of town, run the good people out of town, run the people that are talking about doing right out of town. Read verse 9 with me. And when, and when they, they had taken and secured of Jason and of the other, they, they let them go. go. Turn over to chapter 18. We'll jump down to verse 12. And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. So they're saying Paul going against the law. He, 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 he's a, again, he's a resurrection. Uh, I mean, he's a, a insurrection. He's a, but Paul wasn't going with the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it was a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, oh, you Jews, reason what that I should bear with you. Verse 15. But if you question words and names and other law, look ye look to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. Gallius, I don't care about this Jewish religion. What y'all fussing about? The man talking about a Jesus and y'all take care of that. This, this ain't got nothing to do with the law. 
And he drave them from the judgment seat. He said, get out of my court. Verse 17. Then took all the Greeks to Sartanes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gamio cared for none of those things. So they took it. One of the Jews and beat him. They say, You had no business to bring Paul in here. He's preaching this stuff contrary to the law. He's not being circumcised. He's not preaching on Sabbath. And so then they beat him. But I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And then I give you my title. And then we'll pray with you to the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you say amen. amen. Read verse, verse 1, 1, 2, 3. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sought to lead our brother. The same Jew that they beat got saved. See, see a lot of times, sometimes trouble get people to start thinking about the Lord. So he was trying to help Paul as Paul was preaching, and then they took him and beat him and cast him out. But guess what? He became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to preach to you just a little while this morning. We need today in 2024, more troublemakers, more people that are going to turn the world upside down. Now, I'm not talking about being bad and, and teaching hate, but we need people to turn the world back to God. Amen? Amen. See, the world is upside down. Everybody now doing what the devil would have them to do. They call them good evil and evil good. We need to turn them back to the Lord. Amen. Would you bow your heads? Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another Lord's Day. Really, a Sunday that you have made, we will rejoice and be glad in. Just one Sunday from resurrection, Lord. And Jesus has gone back, and it looked like people are going back to what they've been doing. Lord, going back to sinning, going back to getting out of church. So, Lord, let's get back on fire. We need to be troublemakers, Lord. We need to call some people to turn back to the Lord, just like Paul and his company. How he went down there and he preached Christ Jesus. He preached Christ alone. He told them about Jesus Christ and dying and, and rising from the dead. He told them the same Messiah that they knew in the Old Testament is none other than Jesus Christ. So Lord, help us to get back to telling this world. I was just sharing with our church, Lord. I went to a couple of events packed out and the NCAA tournament packed out. And Lord, we can pack out everything, but we can't pack out the house of God when it comes to righteousness. So Lord, help us to turn the world just like we'd be a fanatic for everything else. Help us to get on fire for the Lord. Just like we can, we can knock the walls down and do everything else. Help people to see, to put Jesus first in their life. Mm -hmm. Lord, praying for, again, the corona situation and the flu and the pneumonia and the viruses out there, Lord. Praying that you give us the medicine and give us the science to be able to treat that, Lord. Praying for our first-time responders. Think about sharing some of the nurses out there still working in the hospital, Lord. The, Firemen, the policemen, the medics, Lord, the Amalane drivers. I saw a few Amalane drivers the other day, Lord. So I'm praying that they will continue to do the things that you call them to do. Praying for those that may be in the hospital, Lord, uh, on ventilators, may be in ICU, may be in the emergency room. Praying that you would raise them up, Lord, and, and get them back to uh, being on, doing things to bring honor and glory to you, Lord. Praying for our schools, Lord. We know our children are winding down this, this term, Lord. Praying that they will learn, Lord, that they would ascertain our I've been hearing that they just pass kids along who can't even read or write or do arithmetic. But Lord, pray, Lord, that we would learn to do, uh, that we would pass to the next level and be able to ascertain, praying for those that are getting certificates, diplomas, and going in the military. Just pray that they will learn, Lord, and do the things to bring honor and glory to you. Praying for, again, what's going on in the war situation with Russia and Ukraine, Lord, and Hamas and Israel, Lord, and the fighting and the killing, Lord. It's so sad, Lord, that uh, innocent people are dying, women and children, Lord, and they're trying to get supply. But, Lord, you know all about it. None of this catch you by surprise. The Bible talks about there'll be wars and rumors of war. Talk about earthquakes and diverse places, floods and tornadoes and, and all those things. So, Lord, we pray that you would intervene and work that situation out for your honor and glory, Lord. We pray for the president, Lord, the vice president, the Supreme Court, Lord, the Congress, Lord, the uh, the senators, Lord, everybody that you have in office, Lord, mayors and governors, and, 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 and just that they would do things to bring honor and glory to you, Lord. We're praying for the police department, Lord, praying that we would get back to righteousness doing those things that bring honor and glory to you, Lord. We're praying for, again, every church planted by your right hand, Lord, that you would let the man of God down in the treasures of your word. Help Lord, help to preach the uncompromising word without, with power without fear of men. Now, Lord, I pray now you forgive me and my sins. Help me to rightly divide the word of truth. Use me just for a little while to preach and teach the unadulterated word of God. And we'll be careful to give you all the honor and the praise.
For in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 The Jews charged Jason with harboring criminals or harboring Paul. And it. Paul was just somebody sharing the gospel. Paul wasn't there to cause an uproar. Paul was just trying to tell the truth. And by the way, whenever you try to tell the truth, you're going to cause somebody to get upset. Amen. Everybody don't want the truth. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. Amen. So they want to arrest Jason for harboring Paul and Silas, and they later escorted Paul and Silas out of the city. They tried to, Paul was only there for three Sabbaths, and Paul was trying to get them to, to, to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. The Jews have been waiting for a Messiah. They have been looking for a Messiah. And so Paul is taking the scripture. That's what I'm talking about. He's showing them in the scripture. He's reasoning with them in the scripture. You know, sometimes you have to take people to the scripture and say, look, look what the scripture said. It's not my opinion. It's not your opinion. It's not what your pastor told you. It's what does say the word of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. So Paul was reasoning with them about this Jesus Christ. And they called them troublemakers. They began to complain about them. They say, these men have come here and turned the world upside down. Huh. Well, let me help you out. We need to do that today. Huh. We need to turn the world right side back up to the Lord. Mm -hmm. There used to be a time I said on Wednesday night when we would fill our church, when we, when we didn't have the fluency, and we would come and we would trust the Lord, when we didn't have know where our next paycheck would come, and we would get on our knees and pray, and God would send money, and God would send food. And today, because we are affluent and we've got away from God, we forgot about God. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. We need to get back to praying for the Lord. My old grandma and my old granddad, they didn't have much of education, but my grandma knew how to pray. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm praying for you, son. Amen. I'm going to pray for you. Grandma, I need some help. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I mean, didn't have a, did, we didn't have, like I said, we didn't have we was Paul. But oh. they knew how to call on the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's something about, I, I guess, a fool take you away from the Lord. But it's something about when you ain't got nobody else to depend on. No, huh? You depend on the Lord. Amen. Amen. You ain't got nobody. I don't know where the next paycheck is going to come, boy. But we were, my mama had seven kids and she had to feed them all by herself. And she had to work her fingers to the bone. Y'all don't let me beat you a little bit. She worked in two or three jobs. And back then, you ain't had no, no, no glory job. You know, she's working as a maid over here, or working over here as a, as a cook, or working over here, or washing dishes for somebody. But somehow, God made a way. Amen, somebody. Somehow, we were able to have food on our table. Somehow, we would call on the Lord and the Lord showed up. Amen, somebody. We need to get back. And then old Socrates, they, they want to beat him for trying to tell people about the Lord. Let me tell you, sometimes you're going to be persecuted. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are going to call you out your name. I, I, I've been called a choir boy, mm -hmm. good at two shoes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think you're better than somebody. Oh, you're self-righteous. I said, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. I'm not trying to be no different from nobody. I'm just an ordinary person. Amen. 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 I just want to tell you about the Lord Jesus. I remember one time, and I shouldn't say this, but I'm saying it. Anyway, I one time, my fraternity brother, they wanted to pass a cup. All of them would drink from the same cup. And I told him, I said, God, so if y'all going to drink that liquor tonight, I believe it. They said, don't leave, Jesus. I said, I'm leaving. I said, I, I, I don't do that no more. And God touched their heart. They said, well, sis, our brother's offended. We're not going to do it. I said, praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. So you never know what your testimony can do for people. You never know. So stand up for the Lord. Now, I, I sometimes you, you be, you know, you, you, you don't want to be the bad guy. And sometimes you don't want everybody to say you're always causing problems. But you do want to help people. Amen. And there's always somebody in there who's looking for help from the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. And the only way, let me help you out. The only way they're going to see the Lord is you going to have to live it. Right. Amen, somebody. You have to live it. Somebody said, well, well, you don't need to say nothing about the Lord. I said, yeah, I do need to say something about the Lord. What do you mean I don't need to say nothing? Well, they know who you are. They, they might know who you are, but I need to sometimes say something for the Lord. Amen. Amen. God needs Christians to speak up. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, now, let me help y'all. Y'all let y'all don't want to. We can talk about everything, but we can't talk about the Lord. Amen. I go to the barber shop and they be talking about the football game. They be talking about the athlete. They be talking about the wealth. They be talking about making money. They be talking about cars. They be talking about, and I said, uh, let me mention Jesus. Hold on! We ain't in here to talk about Jesus. Y'all talking about everything else? 
One time a preacher got mad at me because he was talking about education. We need to get out for education. That's the problem. We need education. We ain't got enough educated folk. And I finally said, preacher, educated folk need the Lord too. Ooh. Amen. He said, what? Amen. I said, educate, like Andrew Rogers said, and I had said, he said, the only thing an educated can do is an educated fool go to hell if he don't know the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. So you need the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. And he said, so you don't think making money and getting our people out of poverty mm -hmm. and getting them out of the project make a difference? I said, yeah, it makes a difference, but it has its place. I said, we still need Jesus Amen. in all of it. We still need Jesus. Amen. You know how it is when you're in the barbershop, right? everybody kind of turn, turn the nose on you then and say, well, <laughs> well preacher. And one dude said, I need to talk to you. I said, well, look, it ain't going to work in the barbershop because everybody's going to be fussing. I just meet you outside and we'll have a one-on-one. -on -one. Amen, somebody. Amen. So God always touch somebody who wants to hear the truth. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So let me give you three points today on why I think you ought to be a troublemaker. Now let me explain. I'm not talking about somebody that's evil and mean and mean spirit. I'm talking about somebody that's telling folks the truth. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. What message did Paul deliver in only three Sabbaths? that a whole multitude was persuaded. Well, in verse four it says the Jews believed and some devout Greeks a great multitude and a few chief women agreed. What did Paul? Paul followed the example of Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Jesus took the scripture and he began at Moses and all the prophets and he interpreted the scripture about Jesus being the Messiah. When those two disciples was going to Emmaus Road and they were sad, Jesus took the scriptures and showed them that Christ must suffer, he must die, and he must rise from the dead, and he comfort their heart. They mean somebody. Amen. So we're going to have to take the scripture. That's the only thing we're going to help people. Let me tell you, I can't help you with my opinion. I say that all the time. I can't help you with philosophy. I can't help you with human secularism. The only thing that I can help you with is thus said the scripture. Amen. So if you need any counsel from me, guess what? I'm going to take the Bible and show you what God said. By the way, when I... Married people, when I counsel people, I use the Bible. When I talk to people about having problems, I use the Bible. So we have to use the word of the living God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Paul reasoned with them in the scripture. <clears throat> now, reason is just using logic. You tell people all the time, you say, you know, the Bible can be interpreted three different ways. It can be interpreted literally, mm -hmm. it can be interpreted figuratively, or it can be interpreted allegory. So what you mean, preacher? I said, well, when the Bible says something, some things, or like in Revelation, when it talks about all these wonders and signs and numbers, those are kind of like symbolic. Y'all know them something? But then there's some things in the Bible that's literal. Where the Bible says Judas went out and hung himself, that simply means literal, he went out and hung himself. Amen. It don't need no interpretation. It means he went out and hung himself. Amen. So there's certain things in the Bible that are symbolic, an allegory. Now again, allegories mean that it's a picture. Like for instance, Abraham had two wives. One of them was Hagar. He shouldn't have had Hagar, but that was the handmaid. And, and he had a wife, Sarah. Well, Hagar was a type of the world. She was a type of the flesh. Well, Sarah was a type of the promise. Y'all with me now? So these are allegories. One of them is a type of, of God's a promise, and the other one is a type of the world. So God only gave the promise to Sarah's son, which was Isaac. He did not give the promise to the son of the flesh by Hagar, which was Ishmael. It's a type of Israel and the world. Amen, somebody. Amen. So that's what Paul would do. He was reasoning them, teaching them the scriptures. And then sometimes Paul would use general revelation. See, in general revelation, people say, well, what does that mean? That means that you can take the world, what you see. The Bible talks about the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and its infirmary. The Bible talks about how all the fish swim one direction. The Bible talks about how the sun is above the earth and rotating. So you can take that sometime and begin to talk about people that you know is a creator because look how everything is in unison. Amen, somebody. You know it's a creator. You know, I tell people all the time, did you know that we breathe oxygen and we give out carbon monoxide? Did you know that plants? They breathe carbon monoxide and give out oxygen. So it's, it's, it's a battle. It didn't happen by accident. Amen, somebody. Everything is in sequence because there is a creator and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ and he created the world. Amen, somebody. So the earth is on an axle. 
The earth has three quarters of water and one quarter of land. So if the earth would mix one out on, the, on its axis, we'd all drown because it's more water on earth, but it's never will miss because we got a God who holds things in the palm of his hand. Amen. 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 The sun is 193 million miles away from the earth, and we get just the right temperature. We have four seasons, and God, if the sun got any closer to the earth, we'd all burn up. If the sun got any farther from the earth, we'd all freeze to death. And why don't it change? Because we got a God who created the, 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 the galaxy. He created the earth. And so we can talk about the Lord, and then we can tell him that. Now, if he created the, the world, then he also created you. Amen, Amen. son. And if you could, you know, I don't know who created me. I was just born. All no, God created you. Amen. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. God put you in the womb of your mother. By the way, I don't believe no children are accident. You say, well, that was an accident. No, no, God knew about it before it happened. God knew about it. So there's every child here is important to God because the child had nothing to do with the mom and the daddy. The child is innocent. God is the one that allowed the child to be born. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. so you can tell people that. Well, I didn't have no dad. I ain't had no hold on a minute. God is your father. Well, my dad, I don't care what your daddy didn't do. God allowed you to be born. And because God allowed you to be born, he's got a plan for your life. And so you need to come to a knowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And you need to repent of your sin and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. So Paul was reasoning them. with about the sky and about the birds and about, did you know that a bird only can survive in the air, and a fish can only survive in water. You take a fish and put him on the, on the land, he'd die. You take a bird and put him in the water, he'd die. So God created that. Everything, and that different kind of animals, a different kind of species, a different kind of celestial and celestial body. God created all that. So you have to start thinking there is a God somewhere. Amen, somebody. That put everything in the world. So Paul is it, 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 letting them in. And Paul didn't just slip in the town of Thessalonica secretly. Paul publicly began to tell them about Jesus Christ. Paul publicly began to tell them that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. See, today we, we don't have no excuse today. We got all kind of technology. We got Facebook. We got Instagram. We got TikTok. We got Twitter. We got Internet. Look, people don't have no excuse that they don't hear about the Lord. You can hear about the Lord on TV. You can hear about the Lord on radio. Somebody is preaching the gospel. So don't give me no excuse that I ain't never heard the gospel. Let me tell you, turn on your radio. Turn on your Facebook. And you can hear me preach today that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is God in human flesh. Jesus Christ came, died, and rose from the dead. Look, you can hear the gospel today. Amen, somebody. My preacher, I don't believe in that Jesus. Well, hold on a minute. Why you don't believe in Jesus? Well, he was a created, you know, that ain't, that's the white man Jesus. Hold on a minute. Where'd that come from? Well, I, you know, they, they gave us the Bible to keep us in slavery. Wait a minute. Where'd that come from? The scripture said, for all they have seen. Amen. And come short of the glory of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. So, so it couldn't have been just for one person because everybody sees it. Matter of fact, the Bible condemns everybody. The Bible says, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Yes, Amen, somebody. Amen. So, 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 so well, what you saying? Well, uh, 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 Christianity is, no, it ain't man-made. It ain't man-made. Now, I agree with you that the Bible wasn't printed back then, but God has always communicated with man. In the Old Testament, he created uh, audibly with, with human. He spoke to Moses. He took Moses up in the mountain. The New Testament today, we have the reading Living word of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. God has never left this world without a witness. We've always had the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the Old Testament, Jesus hadn't come yet, but they had the Father, and he dealt with the people. Amen, somebody. And then when Jesus came for three and a half years, he spoke to the world. And God has always had a testimony in the world. And then when Jesus left, he sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here today testifying in the world. This world has always had a testimony of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We've never been out with the knowledge of God. Amen, somebody. So you never heard it before. Let me help you out. God never left this world to fend on his own. Amen. He's helping us. And Paul was reasoning with them. And they looked at Paul and they said, look, these guys have turned the world upside down. I mean, Peter came and said, there's another, there's another king. But there was another king. I ain't talking about King Caesar. That was King Jesus. There was another king. But Jesus told me, this is not my world. If this is my world, my servant would fight. 
My kingdom is of another land. Amen, somebody. Amen. The Bible says we are living epistles known and read of all men. Amen, somebody. Amen. Did you know that children and grandchildren resemble their parents and grandparents? They take on some of their traits. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, let me help you out here. God is looking for men and women to resemble his son. Amen. So just like we resemble our natural biological parents and grandparents, God needs some in here, some troublemakers, some Christians down here to resemble him. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. James and Peter and James said, look, do what you're going to do. But it's always better to obey God than man. Amen. Put me in jail. Beat me up. Do what you want to do. Well, preach what you're talking about. I'm going to stick with God. I'm not going to side with man. I tell people all the time, and I'm very patriotic. I love America. I'm very patriotic. I wouldn't live anywhere else. But when America turns from God, I'm going to stick with God. Amen, somebody. Amen. I love America. But when America makes a law that killing babies that against God, I'm going to stick with God. Oh, let me preach a little bit. America, when you turn from God and you say same-sex marriage is okay, and you say uh, it's okay to have a, a, a civil union, I'm going to stick with God. So you can get mad at me. You can call me a name, but I'm going to stick with God. It's better to obey God than to obey me. Amen. What you saying, preacher? Amen. Well, let me help you out again. They got liquor stores on every corner. It's legal to buy liquor. But let me help you out. I'm going to stick with God. I don't believe man ought to be out here drinking liquor, having all kind of wrecks, uh, destroying his family, calling all kinds. See, you don't see the story of what happened after you drank liquor. See, all you see is that everybody happy. But then after that, he go home and beat his wife, or he go around and he get drunk, or he run over somebody. Let me tell you, I'm going to stick with God. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. This ain't even my message. I know y'all gonna get mad at me, but anyway. They trying to legalize marijuana. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a recreational drug, preacher. Come on, preacher, we got to make money. You know, they bringing in cocaine from Columbia. You got to do, come on, preacher, let it go, let it go. Let me tell you, if they legalize cocaine, if they legalize marijuana, I'm going to stick with God. Amen, somebody. I'm going to say I disagree. I'm a troublemaker. I don't believe in it, and I'm not going to uh, uh, side with the word. Amen, somebody. Amen. What you going to do, preacher? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to be like James and Peter. I'm going to obey God. Amen. Rather than man. Amen, somebody. Amen. We need to stand up for godly principle. We need to stand up for righteousness. We need to stand up against evil. We need to be bold. We need to be able to say we're going to do what God calls us to do. We need to stand up for our school. They took prayer out of school. Let me tell you, they should have never took prayer out of school because we went from praying in school to having guns in school. Oh. Amen, somebody. We went from praying in school to have teachers molesting children in school. We need to go back to the Bible. I'm going to stick with God. You can do what you want to do, but I'm going to stick with God. Oh, I, I, I didn't mean to preach it, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Well, we done got now where well, we get contraceptive and perception kids, and we do it without the parents' knowledge. Let me tell you, I'm going to stick with God. I don't think you ought to do anything to a child that you don't tell the mom and daddy. You can go to the, 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 the I don't mean to preach on, but you can go to the health department anywhere, and you can do stuff secretly. Let me tell you, I'm going to stick with God. It's wrong for a child to do something to have an abortion and not know about it from their parents. I'm going to stick with God because there's long-term effects when you do wrong. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I know y'all don't want me to preach, but let me tell you, I don't have another choice. I, I was just saying the other day, I, I wish some of my uh, brothers in Birmingham, and I started looking around, and we all look like old men. And I said to myself, boy, he looks so old. <laughs> my wife said, Jeter, they probably saying that about you too. <laughs> And then I thought about it, say, you know what? I may not have that much longer on this side of eternity. Do you know what? Third quarter. I, I want to live. No, I'm in the fourth quarter. <laughs> I want to live the best life I have for the Lord. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I got grandkids that need some help. I'm going to do everything I can. So when my last kicking that I go out here, they're going to say, leave my granddad and talk about the Lord. He, that's all he did. He might not do it a lot, yeah, but he talked about it. So I'm going to have stand up. So all this stuff that they hear them. They're trying to indoctrinate our kids. They're trying to push it down their throat. They're saying all this stuff is right. I'm going to stand up and say it's wrong. Amen. It's wrong. And I'm going to stand for God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Paul stood for the Lord. Paul said, 
we're going to have to stand for them. We're going to do everything that bring honor and glory. Everything they did turned the world upside down. Society they sin should be accepted. We shouldn't be judging one another. The scriptures say we're going to be judging angels, so we need to judge. Society say Christians ought to be silent. You ought not to say anything about your morals and your values. That's your own personal opinion. You don't need to say nothing about it. Let me tell you, there's no separation between church and state. Back when they formed this country and judo Christian, it was a Christian country. And for people to say now, well, it ain't a Christian country now. Let me tell you, I'm going to stick with the Bible. I'm going to stick with morals. I'm going to stick with the Constitution. I'm going to stick with that. We ought to obey God rather than man. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. They got all this stuff today that they say Christians should, should not do. Uh, oh, they got this thing now that says society says everybody ought to come out of the closet. Mm -hmm. And the Christians ought to go in the closet. Mm -hmm. That's just the reverse. Mm -hmm. Christians ought to come out of the closet. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. You ought to come out and say, I'm a Christian. I don't stand for that. I'm a Christian. I don't vote for that. I'm a Christian. I'm not going to side on this side. Well, you know, everybody on this side, Judah, but that's the wrong side. Mm -hmm. By the way, you don't always go to the majority. The majority ain't always right. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. You just stand for righteousness. Amen, somebody. Amen. Here it is. I hate to preach on it, but somebody got to preach on it. They have redefined marriage and families. Mm -hmm. It's been re redefined now. You know, a family used to be a husband, a wife, and children. Mm -hmm. Did you know that's not what a family is today? A family could be five people. I know what five people would be. Two women and two men. A uh, family could be two men. Uh, where did I come from? They redefine marriage and families. I'm going to stick with the Bible. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Here's the problem, folks. When you redefine something, like Sister, Sam, uh, uh, Sister Gabe said, everything that God created perfect, we, the devil duplicate, and he mess it up. Mm -hmm. When you redefine something, it causes problems. Mm -hmm. We need to stick with being here a troublemaker. I'm a troublemaker. I read a lot of Christian literature, and I, I listen to a lot of Christian radio stations, and every now and then a lady will call in or somebody will call in and say, Preacher, one of my friends is uh, marrying another woman. She's a woman, she married a woman, and they invited me to the wedding. And I don't think I should go. But everybody been getting on me and say, Well, you ought to support she's your friend. Mm -hmm. So they ask the preacher, say, Preacher, what do you think I should do? Well, hear what the preacher said. He said, Well, look, somebody got to have conviction. He said, just because you're not going don't mean you don't love your friend. He said, but you should tell her, say, I'm not going to be able to come because of my convictions. I just don't believe a woman should be married to another woman. And I know you're my friend, but I'm just going to tell you that I don't want to support them because if I go, people are going to think that I'm, you know, condoning. So I'm not coming, but I still will send you a present. So sometimes, y'all look quiet on me. You got to take a stand. Amen, somebody. Amen. By the way, if you don't take a stand, folks, your children, your grandchildren right. won't know the difference. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. If you don't stand up, your children, your grandchildren won't know the difference. They need to see a difference mm -hmm. in you. Like Paul and, 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 and Silas and, and, and Peter and James, they stood up. You need to stand up for righteousness. You need to stand up. Now, this ain't even my message, but let me just go on preaching since God just gave it to me. All this Police brutality, beating folks and all that. Let me tell you, that was wrong if it, if, if, if the police is doing his job out of out of wickedness, out of wrong, that's wrong. Somebody had to stand up and say that's wrong. Amen, somebody. Amen. So long as you deny, I, I believe in police. I believe in the law. But the, nobody is above the law. We need to do the law according to the scriptures. Everything needs to be done decently and in order. And we need to honor that. This in order. Amen, somebody. Amen. Point number one. What measure did Paul deliver in only three Sabbaths? He delivered the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Point number two. To be a troublemaker, a world changer, we're going to have to, my wife hit me on the day, she didn't know she was stepping on my message. We're going to have to be an effectively prayer warrior. We're going to have to be somebody that come to God in prayer in fervent prayer. The church cannot make a difference. The church cannot change the world unless we're a praying church. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. We need to pray. Our feelings need to be brought before the Lord. 
We need to pray for our friends. Our friends need to be brought before the Lord. We need to pray for our families. Our families need to be brought before the Lord. We need to pray for our finances. Our finances need to be brought before the Lord. We need to pray when we're frustrated. Our frustration needs to be brought for the Lord. We need to pray for our future. Our kids got future. Uh, again, I was at a function again. I just told you about in Birmingham. And we was talking about mentoring kids. And we had all these guys that were standing up saying, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be an engineer. And we said, well, somebody need to mentor them. We need to pray that somebody will come alongside and help them to achieve that goal. When our kids go to college, when our kids go to school, somebody need to help them, train them, and mentor them, and help them study and build steady habits. We need to pray that we would do everything to help the next generation for the honor and the glory of the Lord. Amen, somebody? Amen. Sometimes praying corporately. You know, we have every fourth Wednesday, we come to the church. Some of you had not been here, but on Wednesday, on the fourth Sunday, we have a prayer time where we get on our face, prostrate, and everybody pray individually, out loud, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody? Amen. And then you should have silent prayer. That should be at your house, a prayer closet, somewhere that you can go alone and pray. You need to be able to go and pray. And by the way, you don't have to be in a certain position. You can pray in any position. By the way, you don't have to have your eyes closed. You can pray while you're driving. Let me tell you, you can pray at work. You can pray at school. You can pray in the office. You can pray in your private home. Look, you ought to have a prayer chamber somewhere where you can call out to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm not trying to boast on myself, but sometimes I come down here to church by myself. And the church is empty. And I get down on the pews and pray. And I say, Lord, I know you gave us this church. And I, Lord, I know you're the one that's going to build the church. So, Lord, I'm, I'm calling out for your wisdom and your guide for you to help. Lord, we got certain families in this church that need you to intervene and you to work things out. Lord, you're the only one that can do it. Lord, I can't do it. I'm just the under shepherd. You're the pastor. So, Lord, what you do, what necessary to bring honor and glory to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. We need to pray. Prostrate. We need to pray. The Bible says in 1 Kings 18, 42, Elijah went up on Mount Carmel mm -hmm. and cast himself down between his knees. And the Bible says Elijah was a man like we were, a man of like passion. The Bible says he told Ahab, it ain't going to rain for three years. And the Bible says Elijah prayed and it didn't rain for three years. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says God told him, say, now it's going to rain. So you need to go back and tell Ahab it's going to rain. And he went back and said, it's going to rain. And, and, and he got on his knees and called the Lord. And he told his servant, go out and look. And see if a cloud in the sky. His servant went out and looked and he said, I don't see no cloud. He said, You need to go look again. He went out and looked again. He said, I don't see no cloud. He said, Go look again. And he went and looked and he saw a little bitty small cloud about the size of a hand. He said, uh, I did see one little cloud. Mm -hmm. Elijah said, Get back. God from the door. Rain now. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, A heavy rain came. Maybe in somebody. He prayed and it rained. Amen, somebody. Amen. And then Solomon prayed when he built that temple. Solomon built that old beautiful temple for the Lord. And the Bible says, when he built the temple in the Ark of the Covenant, and he held his hands up, the cloud, the Shekinah glory came down and it bowed on top of the, oh, the, the, uh, the sea, the mercy sea. And they couldn't get in. And Solomon began to pray and say, Lord, thank you for this building. Thank you for this building, Lord. We want to praise you and give honor to glory. And then, Lord, he opened it. And so we need to pray. We need to be a praying church. We need to pray for this city. We need to pray for the election. We need to pray for our schools. We need to pray for Israel. Amen, somebody. Amen. We just went over this in, 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 our, in, our, in our bulletin. I, I went over today. We need to pray for Sunday school teachers. Pray for youth workers. Pray for the president. Pray for the military. Pray for missionaries. Look, we need to pray. My wife already said prayer changes things. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. Well, Gita, I, I, I just don't think prayer will do anything. Let me tell you. Uh -huh. Stop praying. You'll Stop find out praying. that you want nothing happen, but you pray. Amen. And God will show up. Amen. Now, I don't understand why sometimes he wait till the 11th hour, but I do know this. Sometimes God has to remove all, all you trust. You know, you be trusting in everything else. Until finally you ain't got nothing to trust in but the Lord. And that's when the Lord said, now, 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 now I can do something now. Amen. See, they're depending on me. Daniel, that made a decree. Daniel, Daniel didn't make a decree. These vice presidents didn't like Daniel. Because Daniel was a man of integrity. A man that 
you know, live right. And so they went to the king of the Medes and Persians and said, we saw that we're going to go to the king and tell the king to make a law that anybody pray to anybody besides the king of the Medes and Persians will be cast into a den of lions. Y'all know the story. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible say Daniel, he didn't, you know how some people, they get cold feet. The Bible said Daniel looked, he saw him looking at him. He opened up his womb in front of everybody and turned to Jerusalem and said, yeah, y'all watching? Let me show what I'm going to do. And gathered on his face and prayed. Mm -hmm. Daniel said, look, I've been praying like this every three times a day. And look, I ain't no sense in stopping now. And they saw him and said, well, King! Oh, King Darius, we saw Daniel praying. And you said to anybody that be praying to any other God than the God that means the be cast into the den of lions. The king didn't want to do it. He said, no, no, not Daniel. He said, I guess I got to throw him in there. They got old Daniel and dropped him down in that hole in the ground. There was a bunch of lions down there that hadn't been eaten for two weeks. They were hungry. And God came by and told them lions, said, no, not tonight. You won't be eating him. That's my man. Right. So you can just close your mouth and you will have to suffer for a little while. The next night, next morning, the king couldn't sleep. He woke up and he rolled the stone away from the cave. He looked down and he, you know how he thought it was all over. He said, Daniel. Daniel said, King Darius, live forever. God knew I was innocent. My God has sent his angel and shut the mouth for the lion. And they found no fault in me. They let a rope down and pulled Daniel up. Daniel was just as fire. He said, I was with the lions all night. They couldn't touch me. That was a blessing. They missed somebody. Amen. The king said, I'll tell you what. Go get those men and their families, the ones that incriminated Daniel. And they went and got those vice presidents and threw them down in the, in the den, their wives and their children. And the Bible said the lion broke every bone that they had before they hit the bottom. The lion was so hungry, he said, I finally got some meat here. <laughs> Let me tell you, prayer changes things. Amen. If we're going to be troublemakers, pray for your family. Amen. You're going to be troublemakers, pray for your job. Amen. You're going to be troublemakers, pray for this city. You're going to be troublemakers, pray for this country. Look, a lot of times I can't get there, but I can call on prayer. Amen. I told you all today, even my son schools, when I get a phone call sometime, I don't know what it's about. Before I answer the phone, I say, Lord, give me the courage to pray for this person and give me the courage to tell them the right thing because I can't handle it over my head. Amen, somebody? Amen. So you need to be praying. Lord, give me my last point. I'm done. In 2024, we need more troublemakers, more people that will turn the world upside down, like Paul and Silas. What was the method? Point number one. Paul delivered in three Sabbaths the same message that Jesus preached. Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. And the Jews believe, and the Greeks believe, and a few women believe. Point number two, to be a prayer warrior, we need to be a praying church. Matter of fact, the Bible said Jesus prayed. The Bible said Jesus will sometimes go up in the mountain and pray all night. The Bible said when Jesus was getting ready to choose his 12 disciples, he prayed all night. The Bible says when Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, he went into the Garden of Gethsemane, you know the story, and he told the disciples, would you just wait just a little bit and, and pray for me for a little bit, for a little hour while I go a little further. And the Bible says Jesus went and fell on his face and prayed. So if Jesus prayed, guess what you and me ought to be doing? We ought to be praying just like Jesus. Amen, somebody. Amen. And then my last point is, good troublemakers are not here to win arguments but we're here to win souls. See, arguing with a person ain't gonna get them saved. What you need to do is say, look, I, I, I'm not here to argue. All I'm here, if you're open to the scripture, I can share with you what does say the Lord. Amen. I remember one time I was on a talk show, folks, and they had an atheist there. And, uh, they said, oh, we need you preacher to argue with the atheist. I said, I'm not gonna do it. I said, that's not gonna solve anything. I'm not gonna argue with this atheist on national wide TV. I'm not gonna do it. And so, I just spoke my thing about who I believe Jesus is, who I were, and he spoke why he didn't believe in God and all this. And, and then, you know, it all I said, can I talk to you after the show, after they done shut the cameras down, and after we go into our car. I asked him, I said, well, why you don't believe in God? He said, because of the blue laws. Hmm? Huh? I said, the blue laws. <laughs> he said, I was in the military. He said, I used to drink liquor. Then I came back to America, and they had you couldn't say a liquor on Sunday. Yeah. 
and little Lord. I used to go to church and I just quit because I couldn't have my own liquor and do what I want to do. I said, that's why you stopped going to church. Wow. And then he said, and can't nobody tell me who to sleep with. I can sleep with what I want. I don't believe that's a God. Huh. And then I asked him, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, you're married. He said, yeah, I'm married. I said, well, let me ask you this question. I said, what if your wife went out and slept with a man and got AIDS and brought it back home and gave to you? Huh. What would you think then? Oh, oh no, that ain't supposed to happen. Uh -oh. I said, hold on a minute. You said that you don't believe in God. See, God has rules, and the rules mean that you should not commit adultery. I said, look, just like you don't believe in God, look, you don't want your wife to bring AIDS home. Let me tell you, there's a God, and he died on the sin, on the cross of your sin. And just because you don't, you, you want to keep drinking, look, and you don't believe in blue law, and you want to do, you need to turn your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. The camera was gone. The news media was gone. I, I would like to tell you that he bowed his head, but he didn't. But at least... I planted the seed. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we need to, again, not try to win arguments. Paul said it like this. For I'm determined, 1 Corinthians 2, 2, not to know anything save Jesus Christ and his crucifixion. I'm not hearing Paul said at first that alone, I didn't come to you with flattering and enticing words. I didn't come to you trying to bribe you to be saved. I didn't come to you trying to do some gimmicks and say, you know, I was just talking to some preachers the other day. And they say, well, you know, the churches that got the most candy and the churches that got all the, uh, the inflatable, that's where they go. And they got all this dancing going on. I say, look, I'm not here to, to do any gimmicks. I'm not here to trick people. Let me tell you, the same thing to get people or the same thing going to keep people. The only thing that you're going to get when you come to our church is thus say the word of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Paul said that's what it needs to be. Not with enticing words. Not with wisdom. Not with judgment. He said, look, I'm going to preach the word of God. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts sinners. Look, you need to live right. You need to turn the world back upside down. Paul said that the wicked and adulterous generation seek a sign. Paul said there's no sign going to be given to you but the sign that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let me tell you, Paul said, believe, I mean, Jesus said, believe the works. If you don't believe the works, believe that God sent me. Let me tell you, organization won't turn the world upside down. Personality won't turn the world upside down. Politicians won't turn the world upside down. Money and all the, the raffles and all the sports figures won't turn the world upside down. Fame won't turn the world upside down. Let me tell you, uh, uh, again, talk show hosts, reality, uh, reality shows, and all the entertainers will not turn the world upside down. The only thing that's going to turn the world upside down is ordinary men and women and boys and girls who teach and live the word of God. Amen. Somebody. We don't need no big star in him. All we need is somebody to say, I love Jesus and I want to live for him. Amen, somebody. So let me tell you, I'm not looking for no big entertainer. I'm not looking for no big elder. I'm just looking for a young man or a young girl or a little boy or a little girl that say, I want to live for the Lord. I want to be a testimony. I want to tell my friends about the Lord. I want to tell my classmates about the Lord. I want people to know that I love Jesus. I want people to know I pray at night. I want people to know that I'm obedient. I want people to know that I want to see other people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we're going to turn the world upside down. Amen. We need to get back to the things of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. And the results will be, souls will be saved. People will make a decision. Revival will turn out. People will hear the word of God. If we just do right, things will change. Five percent of people come to church by revivals and by invitation. Eight percent of people will come to vacation Bible school and will come to their programs in the church. One percent of the people sometimes will come as a visitor. They'll find out your church on the internet and they'll come visit. Five percent of the people may know the pastor. I may invite them to church and they come to. But I want you to know that eighty-two percent of people come from people that you know, your family your friends, your relatives, your associates, and they come from just ordinary people. It's your job to turn the world upside down. It's your job to tell people what does set the Lord. It's your job to tell people right from wrong. It's your job to invite people to church. It's your job to say, look, for God I live and for God I die, and I'm gonna be a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So it's important today that we commit to this decision of being a troublemaker. Now, don't, don't get me wrong now. I'm not talking about causing a whole bunch of rookers. I'm just saying, be somebody that stands for righteousness. Be somebody that when they see you coming, they'll know, oh, here he come. Come with that Jesus, though. Oh, here he come. But I'm a good troublemaker. I didn't come, I didn't come to cause no problem. Now. I just come, come to tell you that, look, I want you to do right. You know, you can't be cursing around my children. 
Because my children will pick up on that. And I don't want them to hear profane and ungodly language. Mm -hmm. You can't be drinking that liquor around my family because, you know, they're going to think it's all right. You can't be smoking them, them Cuban cigars and all that stuff you do. I'm sorry. And you can't bring your girlfriend and spend the night at my home because my children won't understand that you're not being married. So I'm going to have to take a stand for being right. Amen, somebody. So I'm going to be the troublemaker. I'm going to be the one that's, oh, that's the troublemaker. Oh, we don't want him. Oh, he going to cause problems. He always wants people to do right. I remember one time uh, uh, the family told the preacher, they said, oh, here he coming. Here he coming. You better straighten up. You better put the look up. You better hide you there. Let me tell you, I'm not trying to do anything. When I go out witness, and I'll share this to you, and you knock on a person's door, and when you come in, you say, uh, I'm a preacher, and I just want to tell you about the Lord. The first thing, the first thing they used to do is say, well, you need to hide all those dirty magazines. No, put them up. Hide them. Or you need to take that look at it, put it back, or put it back in the bar. Look, look, you ain't got to hide nothing from me. God saw it before I got here. What you hiding from me? Look, look, I'm just a man like you, man. Look, I'm here to tell you, and by the way, if you didn't know it, it's not the sins that what you do that send you to hell. It's the sin of unbelief. Drinking liquor won't send you to hell, folks. Smoking cigarettes won't send you to hell. What's going to send you to hell is that you never receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. So, all that stuff you're trying to hide from me is not important. I come in to tell you today. I stop by to tell you that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I stop by to tell you today that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I stop by today to tell you that God is right and everybody else is wrong. I stop by to tell you that God is truth and everybody else is a liar. I stopped by the day to tell you, just like you and me, I'm a sinner, just like you a sinner. But the only difference between you and me, that I got somebody to pay for my sin. I got somebody to die for my sin. I got somebody that I repented and gave my sins to. You don't have that purpose. So if you want to have a right way to heaven, you can do what I did in 1986. I got on my face and I cried out to a holy God. And I said, Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not even good to be saved. But Lord, I heard from my sister, that if I repent and receive Jesus Christ, you would save me. So Lord, I'm calling on you right now. And in 1986, I called on him. And he came and saved my soul. Amen, son. Amen. So today as I close, I want to say, you're watching my Facebook. You can be saved. You can be a good troublemaker. Now, I'm not talking about a bad troublemaker. I'm talking about somebody that helped in the family. I'm not talking about nobody that caused a ruckus in the family. I'm talking about somebody that helped people to see the Lord Jesus Christ. So to do that, you need to be saved. So here's the son of prayer you say. Preacher, I realize what you said. I realize that Jesus came, that he was buried, that he died, was buried, and rose from the dead. I realize that I need to ask him to forgive me my sins. So Lord, would you forgive me my sin? Lord, I want to be a Christian. Lord, I want to live a life to bring honor and glory to you, Lord. Lord, I just want you to write my name in the Lamb Book of Life. Lord, save me and, and, and make me a child of the King today. If you prayed that prayer, I want to tell you God saved you and he put your name in the Lamb Book of Life. Now maybe you're a Christian and you fell away from God. You're not causing any trouble anymore because everybody says you do what they do. That's what the world says. They can't see Christ because Christians live in such a ragged life. So you can say, Lord, I want to get back on fire for you. I want to live a life to bring honor and glory to you. I want to be a good troublemaker. I want to be a world changer. I want to change people's lives that they see the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'd like to say Facebook, until next week, look up. Your redemption draws now. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.